In today's video, I'm going to show you how to enter dividends in Zero. If you want to learn a bit more about dividends, I've got another video. I'll put a link to it in the description below and you can also check it out here. Okay, let's head into Zero and take a look. But before we do, it would be great if you could like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and you'll get notified when new videos are uploaded on a regular basis. Your support really is appreciated. Okay, time to take a look at dividends in Zero. Okay, the first place I'm going to go to in Zero is to the chart of accounts. So I'm going to choose accounting. I'm going to scroll down to advanced and pick up chart of accounts. And I'm going to search for the word dividend. And what you will find that if you're using the standard chart of accounts from zero, there will not be an account set up for dividends. So we need to start off by setting up a dividend account. Now we know that dividends are a payment from profits of the business, profits after tax. So a lot of people will set up a dividend account as an equity account. I'm going to do that, but I'm also going to show you something different if you bear with me. I'm going to go to the equity section Okay, so these are the equity codes that we have at this stage. We only have two codes. We have 950 capital and 960 for retained earnings. If you've watched the video of mine about a year end procedure in zero, you'll know how important the 960 code is. Once you are past your year end, this is where the previous year retained earnings get moved to in zero. So let's add our dividend code within the equity section and I'm going to use code number 965. So I'm going to say add account, account type, I'm going to choose equity, account number 965, I'm going to say dividends and I'm just going to say equity on here and this is for a reason that you'll find out later. It's correct that there's no VAT and I'm going to save. So when we pay ourselves a dividend, we could simply code the dividend to here. But what you need to be aware of is when you're past your year end, you don't want that dividend to have a balance anymore because you want it to be mopped up in the retained earnings and zero won't actually do that for you. So if your year end is the 30th of April, if you've paid yourself dividends, when you come to the 1st of May, you would actually need to move any dividend balance from this code to the retained earnings. You might find that cumbersome, you might not want to do that. And there is another alternative, and this tends to be what I use for my clients for dividends. A lot of my clients are paying dividends on profits as they happen. So we're not retaining a lot of money in the business. So because of that, I'm actually quite happy to set up a dividend code that goes against the profit and loss account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say add an account. Account type, I'm going to say overhead. I'm going to choose 550 and I'm going to say dividends. profit and loss. And that's why I've put P&L and that's why I put equity because I've got two dividend codes. I need to be careful here. Zero is assuming there's VAT on this. So I need to change this and say no VAT and save. Okay. So now if I'm back on all accounts, if I search for the word dividend, div will do. Choose search. Now you can see I've got two codes. One is an overhead code and one is an equity code. Now a dividend is not really an overhead, but that's the option I've had to choose in zero. So let's talk about, and let's actually look at the difference if we use these two accounts. So let's assume that we make a dividend payment. So I'm going to go to accounting and I'm going to have a quick look at my balance sheet. It's default into the current month. I'm also going to pick up the month before. So when we scroll down to the end of April, which is my year end date, I have current year earnings of 2,758. So that's available to pay a dividend. So what I'm going to do, 
is I'm going to pay myself a dividend of a thousand pounds. So let's do it on the 30th of April. So I'll go to the plus, I'll go to spend money. Now this would feed through from the bank probably in real life, but here I'm entering it manually. I'm going to say it's from the current account. I'm going to say the payment was to me, lucky me. I'm going to choose the 30th of April and I'm going to say it's my dividend, thousand pounds, and I'm going to select the dividends P&L and I'll save. So if I look at my profit and loss account, and I've set it up for the last financial year, which is what we want to look at. So when we scroll down, when we get to the bottom, we've got profit after tax, and then we've got the dividends with retained earnings. So setting up a dividend code in the profit and loss account means that the bottom line on the profit and loss will be after these dividends have been paid. I'm fine with that because most of the time the dividends that are being paid are from current year profits. So what you would also need to be aware of is you might have to edit your profit and loss layout because if you remember, we set up the dividends code and we said it was an overhead. So by default, it will actually appear in here under the admin cost. So I have changed the layout, drag and drop work so you can pull something. And I've moved dividends down to section for dividends. So we've got tax, profit after tax, dividends, and then retained earnings for the year. So what that then means, if we pick up our balance sheet, let's look at our balance sheet at the end of this month and let's compare it with one month before. So now when we scroll down, we can see that the current year earnings are now a thousand pound less and the brought forward figure to the current year is that retain profit after paying the thousand pound in dividend. So let me show you what would happen instead if we use the other dividend code. Now I'll go into my current account. It's easy to find this payment. I'm just going to say let's edit the transaction. This time instead let's code it to the equity code and update. So what that does here, if we go to a profit and loss account, there's no impact on the profit and loss because we're not showing the dividend. If we go to our balance sheet, I'm going to choose the end of May and I'm going to compare it with the month before. On our balance sheet, scroll down to the bottom. Remember, this is the year before, 30th of April. We've got our capital, we've got our current year earnings, then less the dividend giving us our balance sheet total. Then when we come to the current year, so this is May, 2021 it's a little bit untidy because the retained earnings we actually want to reduce the dividend figure because we're saying the dividend was last year so if your dividend code is equity we need to do a little bit of a tidy up and how I would do that is I would go to accounting I would go to manual journals a new journal Let's say reallocate dividend is going to be the first date of the year, so the 1st of May. I need to move the dividend to the retained earnings. So I'm reducing the retained earnings code. And I need to pick up the dividend equity and move the thousand pounds. Let's post the journal. I'm going back to my balance sheet. Again, we're comparing May to April. Scroll down to the bottom and April hasn't changed. So we've got the share capital, we've got the profit after tax for the year, less the dividend giving us our balance sheet total. Then when we come over to the current year, it's been tidied up because there's no dividends and the retained earnings brought forward to the current year is what we had last year, less the dividend. So we needed to do that extra step that tidy up on the balance sheet using the equity code for dividends. So just to recap, on our chart of accounts, I've set up two different dividend codes, a profit and loss one and an equity one, and it's up to you 
how you want to do it. I tend to use the profit and loss, but there will be a lot of people that will recommend the equity one. If you use the equity one and you want to tidy up your balance sheet after year end, you've got an extra step to do. You need to add a manual journal. But that is how you deal with dividends in zero. So if you're dealing with simply the payments on an ongoing basis, set up your code and make sure you code your payments to there. I hope that you find the video useful. If you haven't done so already, remember to like and subscribe. I'll be back soon with another video, but until then, happy zeroing.